Hey guys, Jacob with Conti's Custom Rods, and uh, tonight I am going to go over the uh, short two-step part of the process that I have posted last night. I know that there's at least a couple of people that were interested in uh, building rod techniques and, and the steps along the way. So I'm going to start tonight with a four-piece, uh, three-weight fly rod. This is a North Forks composite blank. It's very lightweight, uh, very, very nice to fish, fast action rod. And the first thing I'm going to do is find the spline on the largest piece of the rod or the base part of the rod down here. And then I'm just going to work my way up each piece until I find the spine, the spine and mark it on each piece. This allows you to just kind of work your way from the top to the bottom, or the bottom to the top rather. So with a little bit of flex in the top of the rod, you want to just set the end of the rod on something soft. I've got a piece of t-shirt cloth underneath it. And just use your fingers on your left hand to just kind of roll it until you feel the rod naturally kind of roll up on its high side and roll over just like that. And I'm going to take my china marker and I'm going to mark it on the bottom end and I'm going to mark it up here on the top end, just about where it connects into the next piece. That way it's a little easier as I'm going along to mark and match up all four of the sections. Once I've marked that one, then I'm just going to come back down the rod and do the same thing on the next section. You'll notice that there's going to be always one spot where it's certainly a much higher spot than the rest of the rod. And when you find that, that's where you want to mark it. Mark it again at the bottom. Come up and mark it again at the top of the section. Move to the next section. And move down to the last section. As soon as you feel that thing naturally gravitate and just roll and it'll actually flip in your fingers you know once you get to that point and it rolls and settles into its nice little groove that's where you want it to be so that's step one we found the spine of our ride a rod the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to assemble the rod and i've got a 10 foot tape measure that i've glued to the surface of my workbench um, so it's here permanently, nice and smooth and flat. And I'm going to go ahead and assemble the rod. And like I said, you know, I marked, Let's see if I can show you, the spine on both sections. So now I can line up all of my sections a little easier, make sure that I'm working on the same part of the rod all the time. <clears throat> Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is mark our guide spacing. I like to get all of my china marking out of the way first. That way I've basically done my due diligence to make sure I've checked all my markings. I've put all the ink, so to speak, on here that I want to put on, and then I can move on. <clears throat> I have kind of created my own guide spacing. I'm sorry I'm standing so close right now for this particular rod. 
And I keep notes of everything every time I make a change and I decide I'm going to do something that's outside of maybe somebody else's idea or thoughts or whatever. And uh, I was given a good piece of advice by an older gentleman who has been in the fly fishing industry for many, many years and won some competitions and you know knows what he's talking about and taught me that a few extra guides, especially up in the upper section of the rod so that you get less than a six inch gap pretty much all the way down through the action where the action starts to bend in the rod actually produces a much nicer cast and uh, seems to work out a little bit better so I've got inch one starting down here and the tip of the rod at inch one so you're marking from the tip of the rod at the very smallest point all the way to the end on the butt section of the rod. So we'll start with the first measurement at three and seven eighths inches. I realize I'm not saying these measurements out there too terribly loud, but i um, kind of doing that on purpose because uh, if you want to know what my measurements are on my guide spacing, feel free to ask, but I don't really feel like sharing them too much in public because I put a lot of time and effort into, into figuring out the things that I have on my own, and uh, I like to think that that gives me a little bit better of an edge maybe the competition. Okay, now I've got all my guide spacing marked out on my rod, and this is the point where I would generally start working on the butt section of the rod, working on gluing the handles and the reel seat and things like that. But for tonight, I'm just going to end this video here, um, but I want to share one other thing while we're on the subject of these guide spacings, and I'm just going to pull out a guide. It's not going to matter for this particular part of the video but when you're marking the spacing on your graphite you're marking the spacing to center of the guide the center of the eyelet so whether it's a um, spin casting guide or a bait casting guide or a fly guide the idea is to use the actual loop or the hoop in the guide as you're marking so I would put this guide right smack dab in the center of where I put that white mark so that the wire from the guide bisects right across the, the center of that line. And that is what these marks are intended to do as far as marking where they go. It's not, you know, top of the foot or the bottom of the foot. It is actually to cut that line that you drew right through the center of the wire. So thank you guys, I appreciate you watching my video. Uh, if you'd go to Conti's Custom Rods and like my page, maybe give us a follow and keep watching our videos. There will be more to come here soon. Thanks.